Bernard Tobin here at Canada's Outdoor Farm Show, back again with Pat Lynch at the Tillage Demonstration. Hey Pat, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having us. Now, every year we, you and I do this, tell us what you're up to this year. You're doing cultivators, you know, what are your goals, what are your objectives, what are you trying to show farmers? Okay, one of the uh, most popular and most used piece of equipment on Ontario farms is the cultivator. And typically it is the number one tool of secondary cultivation in the springtime. There have been a lot of innovations in cultivators in the last number of years. Uh, the equipment companies are selling more cultivators. Um, so the idea was let's have a demonstration of the different cultivators with their different options the way they've set up so farmers can see them in a side-by-side -side comparison under these soil conditions. Now these soil conditions are quite apt to be different than what the farmer has at home, but under these conditions what do they do and then the farmers can understand or, or have a feeling for what they can do and then decide how it will work on their farm. Okay, so I want to talk about you know some of the features of these, but yep. hey, let's, before we get to that, successful co uh, cultivation. Give me a, paint me a picture in your mind you know, of, of a well-cultivated field. Okay. What does it look like? That burn is a phenomenal question. It's almost like I gave it to you, but I, honestly I didn't. You came up with it. What we want with cultivation is we want it to be shallow. In the springtime we see farmers going very deep and that's because they're not able to set the older type of cultivators to go shallow. So we want it shallow. We're only going to be planting two, two and a half inches, so there's no point in going down to four inches, certainly in the springtime. So we want it shallow. After it's done, we want it to be as level as possible. We want to have some trash on top, but not enough trash on top that's going to interfere with the planting. So we want a bit of trash cover, we want it shallow, and we want it level, and we do not want it deep, and we do not want it ridged. Hey, let's talk about some features, and always uh, some considerations when you're uh, looking at cultivation equipment. First of all, S-tines versus c -shank. Okay, the S-tine, uh, the, the Danish type of cultivator, it was in vogue when I started in this business years and years ago, the S-tine vibrating shell, uh, cultivator leg. And it is narrow enough, and the feature of it in an S, it would move back and forth uh, to give a vibrating action back and forth as well as going down. So not a lot now of cultivators or cultivation done with s tine but that's, that's what it's designed to do. The rest of the cultivators are typically with a C shank, or sorry, yeah, with a C shank as opposed to an S shank. Um, the C shank are much more solid, they do not have as much vibration back and forth as the S tine do. Uh, typically you can put on a wider foot onto it uh, and then we get into what type of foot is on those cultivators. Yeah, speaking of foot, I mean the, the conversation always is like duck foot versus splake versus sweep. What do you, what do you think about that one? Okay, so it depends on what you're trying to do in the soil type. So if you have a nice silt loam soil like this, you know, vibrating cultivator going back and forth is going to give you a good tillage. Um, there would be no reason to use a wide sweep. The wide sweeps are good if you want to cut everything off, especially perennial weeds go down to No reason to be doing that. Uh, and and uh, uh, more of a duck foot, it, it will do penetrating. On heavy soils in the springtime, I would not like to see a wide sweep going there because it's probably not going to be dry enough to do it. In the fall or in August, the cultivator or September like we are now, a cultivator with a sweep, that's going to work well. It'll, it'll cut everything up. So the compromise is if I, have a, if I have sweeps that are wide enough that everything is cut off, then especially perennial, perennial roots. If I have a duck foot, then there's probably going to be some spaces in between. Now some of them are set up so that the way with the number of rows of, of shanks that everything is moved. So it depends on what the farmer wants, the soil type, um, if they've got stones or not and what the intended crop is next year. So if you're just going in the fall and you want some tillage to start the process of breaking down the, the uh, corn stalks, that's different than if you're trying to get a very fine seed bed for planting alfalfa next spring. So, and the soil types make a bit different. All of those things factor into which type of foot and shank you should be using. Where do harrows fit in here? Okay, so the harrows typically at the back are, are for leveling. 
So, you know, the spike type harrow does a good job leveling. The rolling type harrows, they do a good job in breaking down those lumps. So if you go through with a, with a, uh, a spike tooth or, or, you know, something flat and white and pulls up lumps, then the rolling cultivators, they're going to firm that down, they're going to break their lumps. Um, it, so that again depends on the soil type and what the farmer wants. Do you, do you have a soil that you would like to have lots of lumps going into the fall or do you want it you know, as lump free as possible so that you just go in in the spring time, maybe not do any tillage in the spring, just go in with a no-till drill. Final question for you, um, you know, we've been watching all these uh, cultivators pass us here. Um, what should farmers consider when they're thinking about investing in a cultivator? Well, one good, again, very good question. One of the things about the newer cultivators is how they are leveled side to side and back to front. Some of the older style cultivators, it was a bit of a guess as to when it was leveled. And typically what would happen is the front of the cultivator would be uh, deeper than the back of the cultivator. So for the farmers to get the back to to work around too, they would you know put it down deeper. Now the front uh, is going down, but with the self-leveling poles on the front, they have more control over uh, evenness of depth in the front of the cultivator and the back of the cultivator is going to be going at the same uniform depth. And the you know the the new uh, adjustments on the wings so the wings are not going like this as you go over hills but they are following the contour of the hill and automatically being adjusted to contour. Those are, are big improvements in, in the modern day cultivators. One more, why not? Watch the key. Watch your one thing you tell a producer or a farmer to get cultivation right. Well, Bernard, again a good question. Cultivation is a, it's an art. It's not a science. And a bunch of farmers would have the same soil and their idea of the perfect seed bed is going to be different. So the, the tillage has got to fit the farmer and, and by that it's got to fit the next piece of equipment that comes through, so if it's, if it's a planter. So if they want a lot of trash on top and they have good trash whippers, then you can have a lot of trash on top. If you don't have trash whippers and you're trying to plant corn, then you don't want much residue on top. So farmers have to look at their whole system, what crop is coming in, what soil type, and what piece of planting equipment am I putting in there, and it will it handle the trash. Like, we'd like to have 40% trash cover on top of the field like in the springtime, but not all planting equipment can do that. And to spend a lot of money on the planting equipment, if it's pretty good right now, uh, you could make adjustments in the tillage system to to fit your planting equipment. So it's it's very personal and it's very uh, specific to a grower and to their soil.